list all the possible circuits. So I'm starting at Scottsville here. So I'm going to just abbreviate Scottsville as, as S. Scottsville is going to be my S. Okay? And then P Porter is going to be P. Russell is going to be R. And then Quad Cities is going to be Q. So these are the vertice abbreviations I'm going to use when I'm doing this. These are the abbreviations I'm going to use when I'm putting this together. So there's no confusion. So I'm starting at Porter. I'm going to start at Porter. And if I go to Porter, I have two, I have three choices. Well, yeah, I, 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 I actually am starting at Scottsville. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm starting at Scottsville. That's my starting point right here. See, we're starting our circuit at Scottsville. But I'm going to go to Porter second. Okay. Porter's going to be my first decision. You're not doing the cheapest route, I think. Well, I have to, to do and figure out the cheapest route. I have to list all the, all the possible ones. And we've got a, a, a complete graph with four vertices. I know that because there's three edges at every vertex. So I know this is a complete graph. Why didn't go to Russell? I got started at Scottsville, and this is kind of, I'm going to take this P off, okay? I'll put this P over here. This is my, I'm, going, I'm abbreviating Porter as P. All right, so I'm starting at Scottsville for each one of these. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at Scottsville, and I'm going to go to Porter first. Right, and then I'm going to go to Quad Back to Russell, back to Scottsville, because it's got to be a circuit. It's got to be a circuit. So then my next one, I'm going to go Scottsville to Porter. But now this is where I flip it. This is where I flip Quad and Russell. I'm going to go to Russell before Quad and then back to Scottsville. And then, so those are both the, the two combinations where I'm going Scottsville to Porter in this. So the next one is I'm going to go Scottsville, but now I'm going to go to, uh, to Quad Cities. I'm going to go to Quad Cities, and then to Porter, then to uh, Russell, and then back to Scottsville. And then I have another Scottsville Quad Cities, but these, the P and the Q, they, they swap again. So this is going to be Scottsville, Quad, Russell, then Porter, and then back to, to Scottsville. So here, here, this is four of my six, because remember four, n minus one, four minus one is three factorial. I have six total combinations here. And, there, and then we got double counts in here. So when I take half of six, I know there's three unique. So I'm gonna have to line up what's being double counted here. So now I'm gonna go and switch back to my S, I'm going to go to, to Russell second. I'm going to go to Russell second. All right, so from Russell, I'm going to go to Porter and then to Quad Cities and then back to Scottsville. And then I can go Scottsville to Russell, but now P and Q I'm going to swap. So I'm going to go to Quad and then Porter and then Scottsville. Okay? So Guys, on tomorrow's test, I'm giving you these. I'm giving you the circuits, all the possible circuits. What you have to do is you have to figure out the total cost. You have to figure out and add up all those edge weights that correspond to those, that circuit. Okay, so I'm looking at this, and I just got to pull my numbers off. So from... Scottsville to Porter, that's this one, that, that 400. You guys see the 400? That's what I put in my, in my problem. So 400. And then I'm going to add whatever edge is Porter to Quad. Porter to Quad is, is 200. So I'm adding up these edge weights. And this is what you're going to have to do in the test tomorrow. And then from uh, Quad to Russell, what is that, 100? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like 100. So I'm adding 100 there. And then Russell back to Scottsville is 300. So I add these up. I add all these up. 
And that's what, 600, 1,200? So that's 1,200, okay? Now I go to the next one. Again, Scottsville to Porter, that's 400. But then, Porter to Russell, that's 200. Wait, Porter to Quad is 200? Yeah, they're both 200. And then Russell the Quad. Russell the Quad is is a hundred again. And then Quad back to uh, Scottsville is five hundred. So that's six hundred, seven hundred. That's uh, that's also twelve hundred. How is that the seven? How's, no, that's not twelve hundred. Six hundred, seven hundred. It is twelve hundred. Did I add that up right? Did I add the first one right? No, that's a thousand. I added it up wrong. This one's twelve hundred. I messed up, and 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 I snuck it by all you. You guys got to check, Mr. Bloom. Still, it's still early in the morning. I I can make a mistake. This is this is a thousand. This is a thousand. When I add that up, okay. So now. I'm going to do the next one. And so I'm going to go Scottsville to Quad, and that's 500. Then Quad to Porter, that's 200. And then Porter to Russell, that's 200. And then Russell back to Scottsville, that's 300. That's also 1,200. That's also 1,200. You see I do have different numbers in there? All right. Next one. So I got I got Scottsville to Quad. That's 500. And then I got Quad to Russell. That's 100. And then I got Russell to Porter. That's 200. And then Porter to Scottsville is 400. Okay? And I add that up. And that's 1,200. Okay. Okay, you guys see, guys, I got my double, that's a double here. So I got three 1,200s there. So I'm just going to add, I'm just going to match these up. So S, P, Q, R, S, Q, S, S, P, R, Q, S. These are the doubles here. That, that's my double count, guys. And my other, my other double count is right here. S, Q, S-P-Q-R-S, S-P-Q-R-S. These, these are the doubles. And then the last ones are, are these two. So guys, we've already done all the unique combinations. And these first three, these first three right here, this one's a double. This is a double too. We don't have to do this one. We already did these. We already did these. Because they're, du they're duplicates. Yeah, duplicates. These are the duplicates in here. Where? Oh, oh. So the first one and the last one are the duplicates. The second one and the fourth one are paired up as duplicates. And the third one and the fifth one are duplicates. So these are my totals. So what's my optimal circuit? And, and, and it's total cost. Well, remember, these are greedy algorithms. These are greedy algorithms. So the cheapest cost is your optimal answer. What's the cheapest? Yeah, the first one. The first one, that S, P, Q, R, S. So there's two different ways you could answer this. There's two different ways you could answer this. You could say my optimal circuit is S, P, Q, R, S. Or you can put it. In, the, in that reverse order, the duplicate order, which is S, R, Q, P, S. And the total cost, the total cost is 1,000. So, that, so that's your, you got two parts to your answer there. You got, you got to have two parts. So tomorrow you're going to be given the circuit names and the circuit, all the circuit combinations. You're going to have to 
figure out where the doubles are in those in that list, and then you're going to have to add up those 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 weighted values along the edges, and whatever's the cheapest is going to be your optimal answer, and you'll have to choose that. Yeah, you're, there'll be two answers to this question. Okay. Is it going to be on paper? It's going to be online. I will give you I will give you scratch paper. So so you can work it out. Yes, sir. Um, they're up on the shelf there. They're up on the shelf there. Remember, the review is a minor grade. It's a minor grade, so. All right, I'm going to go to the front now. I'm going to go to page one. Yeah. Can you do number 17? I will. I'll do number 17. Let me get the first page done. So a spanning tree, a spanning tree of a graph must contain every vertex in the graph. True or false? True. That's true. true. Good. Nothing gets by you guys. That is true. Yeah, stuff. How about a Hamiltonian circuit must contain every edge of the graph? False. That's false. That's an Euler circuit. It includes every edge in the graph, but not a Hamiltonian circuit. Draw a complete graph with five vertices. Well, this could look like anything. This could look like anything. Yeah, that, you, but remember, you've got to have every vertex has to share an edge. So you started it off right with five vertices. You've got to connect them all. But I've got to connect them all. So I've got to connect the edges. So I just drew four edges. So now I go to this, I go to this other vertex, and I only have three edges to, to, to draw. And then I go to the next vertex, and I only have two edges to draw. Yep, that's, good. that's what you're going to come up with. Yes, sir. So it looks like that. that. That's one possible way to do it. If, if you did it like a pentagon, yeah, that's what it's going to look like. You could also do it kind of linearly. like a, you, could do, you could do it this way, too, like a W. That, that's also another way you could do it. It just, it just gets all mashed in there. And so, yeah, that's also a possibility. So that's another way you could do it. So, so, so there's, there's lots of different ways you can draw these total or these complete graphs. Okay, next one. How many total and unique Hamiltonian circuits are there in a complete graph with five vertices? Well... N minus 1 factorial for total, so 5 minus 1 factorial, which is going to be oh, wait, that's 24. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. And then for unique circuits, we've got doubles counts in there. You've got to take half that. You've got to take half that, so it's going to be 12. It's going to be 12. So I, so I gave you the, the number of vertices in the complete graph, and then I'm going to give you a picture I'm going to give you a picture where you've got to count the vertices. And I'm going to ask how many total circuits, how many unique circuits. So how many vertices do we have in number five? Uh, we have seven. Yeah, so my N is seven. So then my N minus one factorial is going to be six factorial. Yeah, 720 is what six factorial is. And so does everyone know where to find the factorial button in the calculator? Yeah, yeah, you can do that one too. Okay, so then for my unique circuits, what do I do? I got to divide my total by two. So half of that is 360. Half of that is 360. All right. Next one. Constructing an example of a spanning tree. How is this different than making a path? Well, you guys see, I could make a spanning tree by, by a path. Can I, I'll show you. I'll show you both. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to solve this by making it look like a path, okay? If I just do the perimeter method, that, that is a span, that's a legitimate spanning tree. And that also is a path. That also is a path. But this is only one possible solution of a spanning tree. I also have this one. I could also do this. 
I could do this right here and uh, connect all those vertices that I can to that one vertex. And then, and then just connect this vertex that's not connected here. That is not a path. That's a spanning tree, okay? A path is linear, one direction, and you can't do that there. You can't travel on a path to, in that spanning tree. So, so it's different. It's a slightly different than a path because we've got more than two edges at a vertex. Now, when, when I did that solution for a path, notice that every vertex has um, not more than two edges, okay? When I have a spanning tree, I had four edges at a, at a, at a vertex. It's not possible to make a path out of that, okay? Um, so properties and characteristics that all spanning trees will have, well, no circuits, no circuits, and uh, you can have more than two edges at a, at a, at a vertex, okay? In fact, you can, you can have only, you can have one edge at a vertex. I mean, there's no real rules to as how many edges you have at a vertex. You, you gotta have at least one edge at a vertex because if you got zero edges at a vertex, that means that vertex is not, not, not connected. It's not part of that spanning tree. So questions on the first page, how are we doing? All right. I'm gonna go over to page two. Well, I did page two. That was the. You did. Yeah, that was the brute force one. Oh no no no. Page three. That's what page three. My my pages are sticking together here. Okay. okay. So we're gonna do now nearest neighbor. And remember, we're starting at a vertex here, and we haven't seen a graph like this. So, um, I'm gonna start at vertex I. And know that these numbers, you gotta try to pick them out. You gotta try to pick them out. So what's my cheapest number in there? Eight. Eight? Eight. From I? No, you're going to K on this. I'm going to K, that, that three. That three. Oh, three. Two, three. That three is the cheapest. Remember, nearest neighbor is gonna be the cheapest edge that's available from that vertex. So now I'm at K. Now I'm going to H. Now I'm going to H. Now I'm gonna go four. Then you go back to the I. What's that? You want me to take five? Yeah. But that closes the graph. That, we haven't been to J or L yet, so we can't close the graph if we until we've been to all the vertices. Yeah, you're gonna go to L. That eight. Your choices are eight or eleven to go to J, and we're gonna take that eight that takes me to L. And so now we haven't been to J. Six six closes the graph. We gotta go twelve. Seven closes the graph. So now we gotta go that to J. We gotta go do that twelve. Now we can close the graph. We've been to all the vertices, so now we're gonna close that graph. So that's my solution for nearest neighbor. So when you give out your solution, you gotta give the order that you went to. So I went I to K to H to L to J, then back to I. And then I gotta put my edge weights in there because I need the total cost. So that was three plus four plus eight plus 12, plus 10, and then my total is 7, 15, 27, 37 is my total cost. Okay? So you have two parts to this solution. You gotta give me the circuit, state the circuit, and then you gotta give me the total cost. All right? Nearest neighbor. We've been doing that for a couple weeks, so you guys should be solid on that. Same graph. But now I'm gonna do sorted edges. I'm gonna do sorted edges. I, I'm kind of familiar with this graph already. I know that three is my cheapest one. I know three is my cheapest edge in this graph. So I'm gonna take it, and I know four is my next cheapest. And I know five is gonna close the graph, and I can't do that. And six, six is not an option here, because that also puts three edges at vertex K. So, so then the next one I'm going to do is 7. So I'm going to do that 7 there. Okay. And then I look at 8, and 8 closes the graph. 
And look at 9, and 9 creates three edges at wait, 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 K again. Where did you start at? I didn't start anywhere. When you go from 11... I thought you started at K. No, nope, I'm not starting anywhere. When you go from like L to J? <laughs> I look for the cheapest edge. 11. It's the start at K, though. But for sorted edges, you don't need to do that. Well, I'm going to name it. I'm going to name it starting at vertex K. But that doesn't mean I'm starting... The, the circuit at K. I go, I go to wherever the, 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 the cheapest edge is. Because it's a good question. When it talks about I'm naming my circuit starting at vertex K. It just so happens, coincidentally, vertex K is, a, is part or attached to the cheapest edge in the whole graph. That's just coincidence. All right? I'm going to do this. I'm going to start this again. So... I just look at the whole graph. I'm looking holistically, where's my cheapest edge? Yeah, well, it's, KI. it's KI right there. And then I, my next cheapest edge is KH. And then my next cheapest edge is this five, but this closes the graph. So I can't do that one. I, it creates a circuit. So now in six, this puts three vertices at, at three edges at vertex K. I can't do that one, okay? So these are not an option here. These mess up the rules of my spanning tree. So now seven does work. Seven works for me. And that goes from I to L. And eight, well that eight closes the graph. I can't do that one. I can't do that one. I'm, I haven't been to all the vertices yet. And nine, that puts three edges at vertex K. I can't do that one. LJ or HJ? I could go L, J, or H, J. Yeah, yeah. cuz this one also puts 10 puts three vertices, three edges at vertex I. H, J is cheater. So H, J is going to be what completes this solution. And I got my star. And then that's a different solution than I had before. So I have got my five-pointed star. So I'm going to name now, I'm going to name my circuit starting at at vertex K. And I could I could start by going KI or KH. Now, in nearest neighbor, you're always going the cheapest edge. You're always naming the, the cheapest edge. When you're doing sorted edges, you can do the duplicate circuit and backwards. So K, I, L, that's supposed to be an I. K, I, L, J, H, K. I could have also done this one. I could have said K, H, J. L I K. That, that's the same circuit, just just in, just backwards. And now you got you got to add up. You got to add up all the edge weights. So so three plus four plus twelve plus seven plus eleven. So I'm gonna add that up. So that's seven. That's nineteen. Twenty six. Wow, that's also thirty seven. That's also 30. Isn't that the same thing I got? Well, it's, it's a different solution, but I've got the same total cost. I didn't catch that before. Questions on that one? All right, let's go to page three. That's the one I did. Number 10. This question, can a graph have a Hamiltonian circuit, but not an Euler circuit? Explain your answer or show an example. Is that possible, you guys? Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to touch every single edge for a Hamiltonian circuit. You, right. You just pick the edges that make your circuit. What types of graphs can we not have Euler circuits in? Right. So if we had a complete graph, for example, let's say we had a complete graph that had an odd balance. So if I have a complete graph of four, that means every edge is going to have, or every vertex is going to have three edges. Okay? So I know an Euler circuit is not possible there. I know an Euler circuit is not possible there because we've got all the vertices have an odd balance. But... I do know I can do a Hamiltonian circuit just by doing the perimeter method. No. 
Because I Hamiltonian circuit doesn't have to travel every edge. And there's lots of examples that, that this is true. And there's also lots of examples of, of, of a complete graph that has both a Hamiltonian circuit and an Euler circuit. And the one I'm thinking of is a complete graph with three vertices. With three vertices, because a Hamiltonian circuit is just going to go around it, and so will an Euler circuit. So that so this this both has both both a Hamiltonian circuit and an Euler circuit, and this one only only a Hamiltonian circuit. There there's no Euler circuit here because our vertices have an odd balance. All right, number 12. You have a question on that one? Wimby's a chief. He would like to. All right, and number 12. I clearly see that, but what does that mean? What does that mean? Just you got to know the difference. I mean, there's some graphs that have both an Euler circuit and a Hamiltonian circuit, and there's some graphs that only have Hamiltonian circuit. It's usually a lot easier to make a Hamiltonian circuit than it is an Euler circuit. What's up? Yeah, go for it. Yep, Hamiltonian circuit is a circuit of vertices. Okay? All right, this, guys, number 12, there are lots of answers. There are lots of answers. Okay, you just got to make sure you connect all the vertices and you, re and you return to where you started. So you can start anywhere, really. Um, this is just one possible answer. I'm going to start right here. And I'm just going to go around. That's one possible answer. I, I could have done this too. I could have do done this. I mean, there's lots of different ways you could you could answer this. Um, all right. So no, there's more than one answer for this one. I just um, I just picked out a I picked out a route. I picked out a starting point, and I just went for it. All right. 